اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈسکریمنٹ ویلیڈیٹی ڈسکریمنٹ ویلیڈیٹی از اسیس تھرو فارنر اینڈ لاکر کرائٹیرین کراس لوڈنگس اینڈ ایچ ڈی ایم ٹی Before we move on and assess the discriminant validity, let's assess or let's identify what is discriminant validity. Now, each of the construct in your study has got its own individual existence. Now, discriminant validity will help you determine statistically that each of your unobserved latent variable is actually distinct, is actually separate. has actually individual existence so ol is distinct from op so all the different constructs in your study are actually distinct from each other this is very important in social sciences or questionnaire based research where different construct in a particular study setting or in a particular area may overlap each other so we have to establish this distinctiveness among the constructs in the study so in order to do this we have to establish discriminant validity so that one in the one particular construct discriminates itself from the other construct in the study and all of them have got their own individual existence so let's go and let's assess this discriminant validity here Now look at this here, OL, OP, OL, OP and at the cross section of OL and OP you've got this value here 0.793. Now what is this 0.793? This 0.793 is actually the square root of AVE. This 0.793 is the square root of AVE for OL. So what was the AVE for OL? 0.629. here it is 0.629 let's say we write 0.629 here and if we take its square root it should be 0.793 and have a look here this is 0.793 so this here is the square root of av square root of av of which construct ol because it's under ol or at the cross section of ol So what is this here? 0.861. 0.861 here is the square root of AVE for OP. So how do we establish discriminant validity? In order to establish discriminant validity, this value here should be higher. This value here, 0.793, should be higher than the value underneath. What do we mean by this? So your square root of AVE should be higher than this particular value that is the top value must be higher than this value so what is this value here this is your correlation correlation of what ol with op this value here is your correlation correlation of which of the two variables ol and op so your correlation should be less than the square root of ave and if we explain it further the square root of ave for the particular construct should be higher than its correlation with all the other constructs in the study let me write it for you the square root of ave for the construct should be higher than its correlation with the other constructs in the study the square root of ave which is 0.793 the square root of ave for the construct which construct ol in this case we are first assessing ol the square root of ave for the construct which construct ol should be higher than its correlation its correlation with the all the other constructs so the square root of ave is 
the square root of AV for OL is 0.793. This should be higher than the correlation of OL with all other constructs. Is it higher? Yes, this is higher. Look at this one, 0.861. So the square root of AVE for OP should be higher than its correlation with all other constructs. So where is the correlation of OP with the other constructs? It's right here. If I write, if there is nothing here, obviously, because there are two constructs. If you repeat the correlation, obviously it will come here as 0.633. What is this? This is correlation of OL with OP. This is the correlation of OL with OP. So I can still say this is a correlation of OP with OL. So there is a missing block here, missing cell. This missing cell shows the correlation of two variables. So what's the correlation between OP and OL? 0.633. The correlation between OL and OP is the same as the correlation between OP and OL. So you can write this particular value here. Now, 0.633 is the correlation of OP with OL. We can put it here. And again, your square root of AVE for OP is higher than its correlation with other constructs. So that is the within construct variance. AVE shows the within construct variance. The within construct variance is higher than the shared variance, which is shown through correlation. And in that case, your discriminant validity is established. Now let's add another variable in order to further understand it better. Let's say I've got another variable here. Assurance. Let's connect it. Let's rename it. Let's run the model. Go to discriminant validity. Now look here. This is the square root of AVE for ASR. And this is higher than its correlation with the other two constructs. This is the square root of AVE for organizational learning. And this should be higher than its correlation with other construct. This is OP, but there is no correlation underneath. Obviously, you can put it from here. What's the correlation between? So in this cell here, you can put the correlation of OP with OL. So what's the correlation of OP with OL? OP and OL, it's 0.631. So you can put 0.631 here. What you can put here is the correlation of OP with ASR. So what's the correlation of OP with ASR? Here it is, OP and ASR, 0.575 here. 0.631 will come here and 0.575 will come here. And still the square root of AV for OP will be higher than the constructs correlation with the other constructs. So the square root of AVE for OP will be higher than its correlation with the other two constructs. So discriminant validity will be established. Now let's put this in an Excel sheet in order to better understand it. Now let's make it bold and italic. Now this is the square root of a v. This is the square root of a v. This is the square root of a v. The square root of a v shall be higher than its correlation with the other constructs. In simple terms, the square root of a v for ASR should be higher than the correlation of ASR with OL and OP. Is it higher? Yes, it's higher. Look at this. The square root of AV for OL shall be higher than its correlation with OP. Is it higher? Yes, it's higher. Look at this. But there is no comparison to make because we have already made the comparisons earlier. But you can still make the comparisons. Look at this, this cell here. You can put the correlation of OP and OL here. What's the correlation between OP and OL? This is the correlation between OP and OL because it's at the cross section of OL and OP. So we can put 0.631 here. And what's the correlation of OP and ASR? So OP and ASR is 0.575. We've got one missing cell here, OL and ASR. This is at the cross section of OL and ASR. So what's the relationship between OL and ASR? 0.486. 
Now in order to assess discriminant validity, this value here, which is the square root of AVE for that particular construct should be higher than the correlation of that construct with other constructs. Is this value higher than the two other correlations? Yes. Is the square root of AVE for this construct higher than its correlation with the other constructs? Yes. Is square root of AVE for OP higher than its correlation with the other constructs? Yes. So your discriminant validity is established. Now this was one way to assess discriminant validity. Now there are two other ways to assess discriminant validity as well. Well this is an older method to assess discriminant validity. There is a new method to assess discriminant validity that is much more prevalent these days and journals actually prefer reporting that method and that method is heterotrait monotrait ratio. It's very simple to interpret. You see all these values? These are based on correlation of indicators. How are they calculated? Here is how they are calculated. But now we are not going into detail how they are manually calculated. What's monotrade correlation? That's the correlation of indicators for a single construct. Heterotrade correlation, correlation of indicators between the two constructs. But we are not going into detail of this. There is a video on the channel on how to use it, but I'll share the link. So look at this here. This is green, this is green, this is green. If it's green, you are good to go. Discriminant validity is established. So what's the criteria? Less than 0.85. Your HTMT ratio, the ratio of correlations should be less than 0.85 or a more liberal figure is 0 0.90. So if it's less than 0 0.90, then HTMT shows that your discriminant validity is established. In this case, we can say yes, our discriminant validity is established. Now this value here, this is the heterotrade monotrade ratio between ASR and OL. Now this value here should be less than the criteria that is 0.85. If it's less than 0.85, if this is less than 0.85 and this is less than 0.85, we can say discriminant validity is established. Now this is the second criteria that we can use to assess the discriminant validity. Now the last one is cross-loading. How do we assess cross-loading? Now in order to do this, let me take this whole table to Excel. And let's paste it here. Let's improve the size a bit. Now have a look here, this is ASR and these are the four indicators of ASR. This is OL and these are the four or rather eight indicators of OL. This is OP and these are the five indicators of OP. Now what are these values here? Now if you look at this value here, which is under ASR and right next to ASR1. So this value here shows the loading of ASR1 under ASR, which is assurance. So if this item is put in as an indicator of ASR, its loading is 0.869. Now look at this loading here. It's under OL, but for ASR1. What if I add ASR with OL? What if I add the, the indicator ASR1 with the underlying construct OL? Its loading significantly decreases. Look at this here. If I put ASR1 with OP, the loading significantly decreases. ASR1 actually belongs to ASR. This is the indicator of ASR. So it's must, it must load higher and significantly well with its parent construct instead of the other two construct. Is this the case? Yes. If this is the case, is this the case for this item as well? Is this the case for this item as well? Is this the case for this item as well? Yes. So no issues of discriminant validity for ASR that is assurance. Let's look at the other example. OL1. So where is OL1, OL2, OL3, OL8. Where is the parent construct of OL? Where are, where is the parent construct for all these indicators? Here it is. So these items 
as they belong to OL, they must load better onto their own construct. How would I assess if it's if these indicators are loading well onto their own parent construct? Look at the loading of OL1 if it's with OL 0.667. But if I put OL1 with ASR, its loading is 0.416. If I put OL1 with OP, its loading is 0.376. Its loading is higher if I put it with OL. Look at the other loading. It's higher when I put it with its own parent construct. Similarly, for the rest of the six indicators of OL as well. They are loading well onto their own parent construct instead of loading onto their onto the other constructs in this study. Look at OP. OP1. If it's loading with its own parent construct, its loading is 0 0.804. If I move it to ON or ASR, its loading decreases. Similarly for the other ones as well. So this shows that there is discriminant validity. So the items for a particular construct are loading well onto its own construct instead of the other constructs. Are they loading well onto their own construct? Yes. If they are loading well onto their own construct, this shows discriminant validity. Is there any issue of discriminant validity here? How would I identify? Now previously you have had a look at HTMT here. This is all good. So there is no issue of discriminant validity. What if there was an issue of discriminant validity? What, what if something here was red? What if this value was lower than these values? Then you will use cross loadings. You will come here in cross loadings or this table and see if a particular item is loading well onto other construct instead of its own parent construct. If it is, then you need to delete that particular item. For example, let's say we had an issue of discriminant validity and that issue was between ASR and OL. That issue was between ASR and OL. How do I say that it was between ASR and OL? Let's assume, let's assume this value here. This value was less than this value. Just for the sake of assumption, this value here. ASR and OL, this value here, the correlation for ASR and OL was higher than this value here, which is the square root of AVE for ASR, just for the sake of assumption. Now, if this is higher, we'll, you will have to check for your cross loadings. Let's say I come to cross loading and I find out that this value here is 0 0.910 and this value here is 0 0.869. Now look at this. This particular ASR1 is loading well onto another factor instead of its own parent construct. Because this loading here is higher than this loading. And the difference is less than 0 0.10. The difference is less than 0 0.10. Now we need to delete this indicator from our model in order to establish discriminant validity. Similarly, you will assess the other indicators as well. If the difference is less than 0 0.10, you should get rid of that indicator. Even if it's greater than 0 0.10 and there are discriminant validity issues, check removing that item. Because it might be 0.11 or 0.12. Still, there is the difference is not that much. But be very cautious about it.